Hey everyone, it is Danny and welcome to this update video. So I hope that you are all doing amazing today. And so in this video, we'll be talking about what is currently taking place across the tropics as well as updates to predictions that are out. And so before I go into all the necessary details... Okay, and so let us start off with a view of the North Atlantic Basin right now. And so on satellite imagery, we're seeing here that uh, we do have some moisture that is noted in sections of the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico. And there's also an upper level low that is out there, well off the east coast of the U.S. And we also have a wave that has emerged off the coast of Africa. We see quite a bit of shower activity within that area. And so uh, things are quiet right now in terms of tropical cyclone activity, but as as we head further into this month, we are expected to see a change. And as a matter of fact, uh, the Euro and GFS models, the ensemble tracks, have been showing something very interesting for the coming week. And so let us go ahead and talk about that. And we are now taking a look at the Euro ensemble tracks between now and uh, Sunday the 14th of August and we are seeing all those L's out in the main development region and uh, these are suggesting that we might see a tropical wave maybe try to get in shape and maybe develop into something so the next name to be used for this hurricane season is Danielle and uh Maybe if we have development taking place at that time, we will see a new name storm. But as of right now, things are quiet. And this is not even guaranteed to take place because things can change. And things have been changing a lot. So we have to wait and see what the eventual outcome is going to be. But we're going to go ahead and take a look at conditions uh, that are ahead as well as those new predictions. But here are the GFS ensemble tracks. And we see that we have less compared to Euro. So so uh, we definitely have to wait and see what is going to be happening. But things have been pretty quiet. But that doesn't mean that this season won't produce any significant storms. Because sometimes it only takes one to cause some massive destruction and really be the talk of the town. All right, so let us go ahead now and take a look at conditions. So starting off with ocean temperatures and we're seeing here that things are pretty warm, especially in the Gulf of Mexico. And going to August and September is when uh, persons along the Gulf Coast really have to pay attention to what's going on out there because this is around the time when we would typically have systems uh, making their way in the Gulf of Mexico and rapidly developing and we've seen it with so many storms in past seasons and uh, we definitely have to look out for that potentially happening this year again and uh, so yes ocean temperatures in the gulf of mexico are very warm same story for the caribbean of the east coast and even out into sections of the main development region but as we're approaching the coast of africa going from about let's say around 15 degrees north and northward of that we see those greens which mean that ocean temperatures temperatures are a bit cooler but usually we have our tropical waves propagating along the intertropical convergence zone which is where the trades of the north and south meet so uh, they typically make that westward motion and they might develop but them steering into the Caribbean or maybe going up to the east coast or being a fish storm will be dependent on the strength of the high pressure at that time. And so let's go back to what the Euro Ensemble tracks are showing. And so we're seeing somewhat of a westward to northwestward motion that is expected. And so if we have a weaker high pressure system, then we should expect more of a northwestward track because that high pressure is just a block. And the stronger it is, the more uh, these storms are forced or steered to the west but if it is weaker then the storms can curve around it and that is when we have more of that northwestward like motion so we definitely have to wait and see as i said but there are many factors out there and one of the huge inhibiting factors is the saharan dust so all of this dry air is still out there but if we have most of the convection associated with or upcoming tropical waves remaining south of this massive dry air then maybe there will be an opportunity for them to get in shape 
landscape and organized into tropical cyclones. And that seems like the likely story ahead of us because this season is already expected to be an above average one. And we are heading towards the peak when we have the most conducive conditions to enable tropical cyclone development. And so looking at past seasons in the month of August, specifically the latter part of August, we have seen some absolutely uh, devastating systems going back to years such as 2019. Dorian developed on the 24th of August and it was a Cat 5. In 2018, there was Florence that developed on the last day of August and it was a Category 4 at peak. Laura in 2020 developed on the 20th of August and was a Category 4, almost a high-end Category 4 hurricane at that. And then last year, there was Island. There was also Grace that developed on the 13th and intensified in the Bay of Campeche uh, to a major Category 3 hurricane. And then Ida was on the 26th of October that developed into a major Category 4 hurricane in the Gulf. And so... Is that going to be what happens this year? Will it be Danielle or upcoming storms behind Danielle? So uh, we definitely have to wait and see. But as I said, we need conditions to be conducive. We're talking about those warm ocean temperatures, which are already there once we have that favorable shear as well as little dry air intrusion. So mainly a moist environment. Then we have the optimal conditions for us to see some really significant development as we're going to be heading into the mid to latter part of this month but again we have gfs and euro starting to smell at something maybe try to develop out there so let us wait and see if that is going to be happening guys but of course i'll be keeping you updated and so what are the most recent predictions so csu uh, which stands for colorado state university made a prediction earlier this year and they expected 20 named storms 10 hurricanes and five major hurricanes at that time however now that number of named storms is been downgraded to 18 named storms and that number is still for an above average hurricane season 18 named storms is quite a bit so uh because there is such a hibernation and tropical cyclone activity right now, there are starting to be some doubts about this hurricane season being a very active one. But uh, nevertheless, we can have things being quiet now, but we have a very active September, October, and even November as well, because uh, that La Nina might strengthen. If we have more conducive conditions, especially close to the end of the season, then we can definitely expect quite a bit of storms around that time. And we also have another prediction uh, that is uh, from UKMO and so they're calling now for 60 named storms, 6 hurricanes and 4 major hurricanes which is downgrade in their previous prediction on the 23rd of May where they were expecting 18 named storms, 9 hurricanes and 4 major hurricanes. So guys, uh, we definitely have to wait and see what's going to be happening and even though we're seeing a decrease in numbers here uh, that doesn't mean that there won't be any major systems because a season like 2017 with only 17 named storms produced about six major hurricanes and m most of that number we're talking about storms such as Irma, Maria, Harvey they were destructive hurricanes guys so it is not just about the numbers guys and so of course I'm going to be keeping you updated as time goes by but again that wave is expected to emerge off Africa and we're seeing our models here expecting that maybe something will try to develop uh, but let's wait and see what's going to be happening but as usual I will be keeping you updated and so that is really it for this update and if you found this video to be quite informative please a thumbs up and you can also share your thoughts with me in the comments or ask a question i will try to respond as best and as soon as i can and of course remember to always be weatherwise